It has been a day of travel for me, but I'm here, I'm in Charlotte, and I can tell you one th place I don't want to travel, and that is into the teeth of this physical magic defense. How physicality has defined the Orlando Magic this season. We'll get to that on today's episode of Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are indeed Locked On Magic. Today is April 5th, 2024. My name is Phil Prosser, I'm the expert and site editor over at orlandomagicdaily.com. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, we're going to talk about the Magic's physical hit-first mentality, how that has come to define their identity and their defensive identity. Plus, we'll talk about the little inversion that's happened with Magic's pain points and three-point shooting, kind of reset some stats on that after uh, Wednesday's game. And we're going to get a little bit into the rumor mill why every shooter on the market is going to connect it to the Magic and why that's you know a, part, a good thing, um, but not necessarily the thing to believe quite yet. We'll get to all that coming up here in just one. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. So I think the New Orleans Pelicans are, are still trying to figure out what happened at the end of the game on Wednesday in New Orleans. Um, with seven seconds left, Herb Jones, Trey, uh, Trey Murphy, and uh, Dyson Daniels all got eject just straight ejections. Only one technical, but straight ejections uh, as the Magic – polished off a really physical and really nice win over the Pelicans. 117-108, um, obviously it was 114-108. It was so, you know, it, it was a game where the Magic had to make stops and had to make big plays and couldn't necessarily rely on their offense. Um, you know, if you look at their clutch stats, the offense is really bad, but the defense is typically really good. And while, you know, I was, I was actually talking with uh, with Josh Cohn over Magic.com about this is, Probably the one win that's missing from the Magic's resume at this point, and someone please correct me if I'm wrong, is a win where they're down like four or five points entering the final three minutes, and they have to come back and win. A lot of the Magic's success this year has been because they've been able to play from ahead. And a good chunk of that, a good chunk of that kind of success starts with your defense. Now, the numbers for the Magic's defense are incredible. They're second in the league in defensive rating. They're second in the league in defensive rating since the All-Star break. They're giving up about 110 points per 100 possessions, which is just mind-boggling considering where offenses are. Um, they're 111, 112 um, for the year as a whole. It's been pretty consistent. Um, they've been top five of the top five uh, for the year for almost the entire season. Their defense is their bread and butter. They know it. You know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. And teams are having to contend with this kind of a team. But how do you build such a great defense? Um, you know, I think the easy answer that a lot of people have given is that this team just plays harder than everyone else. When the Magic were taking the league by storm earlier in the season and, and kind of establishing themselves, I remember – so many of the pundits and so many of the uh, of the analysts saying, oh, well, they're just playing harder than everybody else. They're just getting after everyone much harder than everyone else. And, and look, the Magic play hard. There's there's no, about it, no doubt about it. Jamal, Jalen Suggs is, you know, driving people to beat another level. And I would argue Jalen Suggs is probably is like the heartbeat of this team. But it, it, it's obviously a little bit more than that. There's obviously scheme involved, but this is a team that, is not afraid to be physical, not afraid to hit first. They know their strength is their size, and they look to use that at all turns. We're going to talk mostly about the defense today, but the offense loves to be physical too. They lead the league in free throw rate. It's a team that gets to the line a lot and has to get to the line to make up for some of their offensive shortcomings. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out in the playoffs. But everything for this Magic team starts – from that physical standpoint, from that belief and that 
that desire to be the more physical team. That is who this magic team is. That's who this magic team wants to be. And that is essential to the magic, essential to, uh, to, to, to their identity and who they are. Um, they, they're really good. And, 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 you know, I'm going to give you some numbers here in a minute, but you know, New Orleans was frustrated that entire game. Um, both, you know, New Orleans likes to play physical too. And, and, and I think physical teams do can get out muscled, but it really felt like Orlando's size bothered them and Orlando's intensity on that end really bothered them and took them out of everything they were trying to do. This is essentially the key to the magic game. And so, you know, I would argue, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right. Um, a lot of those technical fouls came from the magic being physical and getting away with it. And the Pelicans not liking and not feeling comfortable being physical, essentially with defenses now. And obviously defenses have kind of taken a little bit of a step forward here, but with defenses now, it's about, um, it's about making the other team feel uncomfortable. Because if the other team's comfortable, if your opponent is comfortable, they're going to execute their stuff. And so the magic, their whole strategy is we're going to hit you first. Jalen Suggs is going to get around that screen, put his body directly in front of you and absorb you through his chest. Just watch, watch him play defense. Watch how he gets himself in front of his man and just takes those bumps and doesn't give an inch, doesn't get knocked off course. Franz Wagner is really good at this. Again, just anticipating where his man's going to be, taking that bump straight into his chest and not giving an inch. You know, we, we talked about Franz earlier in the week here. Um, I think that was Tuesday's episode um, or Wednesday's episode. Um, we talked about him and how he's having a career everywhere. That that includes defensively where he has been excellent this year. And and obviously I haven't even gotten into Jonathan Isaac, who's just an eraser, you know, the magic. Just do not give up points when Jonathan Isaac is on the floor. Jalen Suggs is an all defensive team player. This is who the magic are. They give you a wall of size. They present a lot of bodies, and they're not afraid to take hits. Just look at the stats. The Magic collapse the paint well. They give up 47.7 points in the paint per game. That's eighth in the league. And that's even without a traditional shot block. The Magic only give up 25.4 field goal attempts per game in the restricted area. So they're, they're not giving up a lot of those shots right at the rim. Obviously, Jonathan Isaac, the Magic have a 101.7 defensive rating with Isaac on the floor, which is insane. They force a 15.3% turnover rate because they're constantly into your body and constantly getting deflections. This is where the Magic deploy and use their strength. This philosophy of having all these long players is about that. It's about being disruptive and, and getting into players. And you can be long, but if you're long without physicality, it means nothing. And this Magic team, despite having several players that I think before they came to Orlando were not thought of as physical defensive players, have wholly bought into a defensive mindset. And here's the thing. Here's what really matters about it, okay? What really matters about the way the Magic play is that this is the brand of basketball that works in the playoffs. Look, we know the Magic are going to have to score own problems dealing with physicality, so this is going to be a a bit of a double-edged sword. But being able to get stops, being able to own your opponent physically, having to punch first, having to hit first, and be able to absorb those hits, that's what's going to be successful in the playoffs. That's what's going to work when we get to the postseason. And so, you know, I'm, I'll admit it here. I love what this team's done. This team is really, really special. This has been a ridiculously fun year. I'm still a little skeptical about them in the playoffs. Um, you know, I, we'll see who they end up, you know, matchups are going to matter. The offense concerns me in the playoffs. And, and, you know, again, we'll get to more about the future here in a, in a little bit. 
Um, but this team does have that element that's built for the playoffs. I have no doubt that their defense is going to keep them in some games. I don't know if they'll be able to win some of those close games. And, you know, we've seen over the last week that they can struggle in that. But I have every faith that the Magic are going to be competitive and give themselves a real chance to win some playoff games because their defense is built for it. We're going to talk once again, though, about one element of the Magic's physical play, their ability to get downhill to the paint, why that's tailed off a little bit. We're going to talk about a little inversion, a little pull reversal that's been going on since the All-Star break. We're going to get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word for Robin Hood. If my overlay will join, there we go. Uh, did you know? that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA. Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. The offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA is available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker-dealer. We want to thank you for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Day 24-7 streaming channel. We all want the best sports information. We all want the best sports analysis. And unfortunately, sometimes those major networks, your Fox Sports, your ESPNs, they don't give that to you on a daily basis. Instead, they give you noise. They give you shouting. I can't shout right now because it's technically quiet hours in the hotel, so... I can't yell if it sounds like I'm a little quieter than usual. That's that's why I'm trying to be respectful of, of my hotel my hotel guests here. Um, but if I turned on Fox, Fox Sports or ESPN, that would be just as disrespectful. You want the best analysis, and that's what Locked On Sports Today gives you. Locked On Sports Today brings you the biggest stories without all the streaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team Every day. So I, I think I touched on this a little bit earlier in the week. So I apologize if I'm repeating some things here. But but there's been an interesting little reversal, a kind of pull switch that's going on. And on one hand, it's actually pretty encouraging and, and a good sign of things. And on the other hand, it is something that I'm worried about. Um, because, you know, we talked about how Magic's defense is going to be playoff ready. I, I have no doubt that this Magic defense is built to succeed in the playoffs. Um, it's it's going to come down to execution, obviously. It's going to come down to whether the Magic can get the stops that they need, the rebounds that they need, You know, can prevent turnover so they can get that defense set. Um, I, I am fairly confident that if the Magic can get themselves set in the half court, they are going to be successful in the playoffs defensively, Just just plain and simple. What we don't know is the offense, and obviously it's been a struggle all year long. Now, since the All-Star break, Orlando is about league average in offensive rating, and a big reason for that is they are suddenly surging from three. It's actually pretty incredible. They are, they are suddenly surging from, three point, from the three-point line. Since the All-Star break, the Magic are 11th in the league in three-point field goal percentage at 37.4%. They make 11.8 threes per game. That is still among the lowest in the league, but it's 24th now instead of like 29th, 28th, 27th. In fact, the Magic's three-point field goal percentage has jumped to about 22nd um, in the league for the season overall. So, you know, we have a you know 20-game sample size, a 21-game sample size. That's a quarter of the season now where the Magic have been making threes. Um, even Thursday against the, or Wednesday against the Pelicans, the Magic made 13 of 22 threes, 40.6%. I, I, I've said that I, I think the Magic's right number for three-point attempts right now, probably low 30s, probably under 30, to be honest. 
Um, but if they're making them, yeah, get that thing up to, to 32, 33, 34. That three-point shooting, though, has come with a bit of a sacrifice. Um, the Magic have suddenly been struggling to score in the paint. For the fifth straight game, the Orlando Magic did not reach their season average, about 51, 52 points in the paint per game. Um, they did not reach their season average. On Wednesday, the Magic scored just 48 points in the paint. Now, I know I talked about it um, earlier this week. In this context, when the paint, when the game, the Magic won the paint Wednesday, 48-46. Defense was really good in the paint. Um, and on top of that, and this goes for both teams because there are a lot of fouls, um, the Magic also typically get to the line a lot. So there's some point, there's some points in the paint that get lost because you're, you know, attacking a basket, getting to the foul line. Orlando took 30 free throws in Wednesday's game, another really good sign for them. So the question then is, what's real? What's sustainable and what's ultimately, yes, going to work in the playoffs? That's what this is all about at this point. But the Magic are able to get these things to work in the playoffs. If they work in the playoffs, then it's all good. Um, at this point, you know, we saw and the loss of Warriors and the loss of the Clippers and, and even a, a little bit against the Blazer and against the Grizzlies too. Three-point shooting is not reliable for this team. Um, as encouraging as the shooting has been lately, three-point shooting is not reliable for the Orlando Magic, plain and simple. And so that is, I think, one of the concerns um, that the Magic are not scoring in the paint as much. That is a much more, it's tougher to score in the paint in the playoffs, obviously. But to me, that is a much more reliable way for this team to be successful. If you know again, win the paint, win the game. That you know, I I've, I know I've said this a million times this year. If when the first thing I look at when I get the box score is points in the paint. If the Magic won points in the paint, I feel very good that they won the game. If they don't, I'm a little bit sketchy. And you know, if you go back and look, they lost points in the paint to the Blazers. They lost points in the paint uh, to the to the Clippers to the to the, to the Warriors. Like this is as indicative as any stat that the Magic have of whether they've won or lost games. And so. If I'm a little bit obsessive, and, and and this has been something I've been thinking about and looking at throughout the course of the week, if I'm a little bit of, of, of obsessive about it, this is why. I do think these numbers matter. Um, I did get the chance to ask the manager directly about it when I was in New Orleans, and you know, they, you know, they're giving the right answers. You know, I don't think they think too much about the raw numbers, but you know, they said, like, look, we're we're gonna take what the defense gives us if you know, we get into the paint, suck, suck everyone in and pass it back out to three. We want to take those threes. If that means we take 35 that game, it means you take 35 that game. Um, the Magic are not going to be afraid to shoot the ball. They've never been afraid to shoot the ball. That's been a continued theme throughout the year, whether they're making or missing it, they're going to have faith that they're ultimately going to make those shots. Again, I think that's fine. I think that is the right approach. I think you can't Go into the game saying, okay, we're going to limit ourselves to 33s. That you got to go how the game goes. If the game dictates that you shoot more threes, you got to step in confidently and make them. I agree completely with that analysis and completely with, with that mindset and that take from, from the team itself. But you also got to understand who you are and what your strengths are. And I think, and you know, Paolo mentioned this that you know, when I asked Paolo about being more aggressive and and staying with a shot, you know, he said, no, I've, I've, you know, he understood he has to play a little better. He has to take his game up a level here coming into playoffs. And he hasn't been doing that. And a lot of that is he settles for three. Now he took six threes against the Pelicans. Um, that's a little high for me. You know, I, I think four or five is the right number for him, but you know, he started to step in to take stepping in and making them, um, you know, throw the kind of quick pull-ups, but you know, he's getting more comfortable from three. And so that shot has become part of his arsenal. But as long as he balances that with getting downhill to the basket, that's going to be really good for the seat because ultimately that's their money spot. That is where they need to score is in the paint. So this is something I've been continuing to watch, continuing to observe, continuing to note that yes, the magic are shooting a lot better from three. They're, you know, about league average since the all-star they're, they're above league average since the all-star break. Uh, they're, not league average yet, but but you know they're they're shooting it better from three. There's a lot more confidence from three. The question is, can that be sustainable, and can the Magic still maintain a strong work through the bench? That's going to be the big question 
for the Orlando Magic as we get closer and closer to the playoffs because ultimately what the Magic need to be figuring out and what the Magic need to be preparing for is what's going to work in the playoffs. You're obviously going to have to hit some shots in the playoffs. No doubt about it. Um, but their ability to get downhill to the paint is so vital to so many things that they do. Over the weekend, we did get a fresh free agency rumor. I want to address a little bit about it and talk a little bit about why I think it's not the worst idea, but what it's really saying uh, about the magic once again. We're going to get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at Amazon Fire TV. Look, I've been traveling around this week, so you know I never know what's going to be on the TV. I never know what's going to be available to me. With Amazon Fire TV, I know that I'm going to get the destination for sports and so much more. All I have to do is bring my Fire TV stick, stick with me, and I will have access to the best in live games, to highlights, to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences too. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, NHL, and so much more. Not to mention, great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos too. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked, you should. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Today's episode of Locked On Magic is also brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Are you the kind of driver who likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class exclusive Google built-in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone, Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. Nissan's incredible lineup also includes the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder, has room for up to eight, an expansive cargo capacity, and advanced available 4x4 capability with 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds towing. When adventure calls, the Pathfinder is there to answer. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check it out today. Shop now at NissanUSA.com. I, I want to be wholly focused on the playoffs. If, if I go a little game heavy right now, it's because the games kind of matter. I know it's a weird feeling for all of us. Um, the Heat lost to the Sixers, so the Magic are inching closer and closer to clinching uh, a, a, an official spot in the playoffs. Let me actually get you the actual magic number here. So if I, so if you give me a chance to stall, um, the magic, the magic are, let's see, 48 magic are four games away. Magic number is four to clinch the Southeast division, as well as uh, a top six seed in the playoffs. Magic number is officially four. So again, they're playing the Charlotte Hornets. That should be a win. I know they just beat Portland. Um, I know they just lost to Portland, actually, if I'm not mistaken. They've lost uh, four in a row here, um, one and nine in their last ten. So, you know, again, we're inching closer and closer and closer to the Magic clinching a play, a play in the playoff spot that should happen next week, actually. If, you're, if the Magic number is four, let's say, the, you know, if the Magic get one more win, looking like next week we will, you know, obviously we're getting closer and closer to the end here. But um, the Magic should clinch it on the road here uh, in the next week. Hopefully we can get it. Home. I'd love to see it get done Sunday. That way we can celebrate at home instead of waiting for the last game of the season. But, um, you know, we're ready for the playoffs. Um, and obviously, I, I, I know I, I know some people have probably gotten tired of me saying this. The Magic don't really know what they need yet. Um, the Magic are going to learn about this roster during the playoffs. Um, and they're going to learn a lot about what they need and, and and what this roster is actually missing and what they can actually grow and what they actually need to go out and get. Um, obviously, though, things have changed. 
Um, I've noted this. The winning window is open. Um, you know, clearly we're the four seed fighting for the three seed, fighting for the two seed in the last two weeks of the season. Um, this Magic team is ready to compete at a higher level, and, and ultimately, that's now on Jeff Weltman to make sure this team remains competitive. Um, I, I'm not necessarily expecting gigantic changes this summer. Uh, let me be let me be honest about that. Even though I think this is a big summer because it's the last summer before. Franz Wagner and Jalen Suggs are owed extensions. So it's kind of the last summer with free money. So I do think the Magic need to spend it and spend it wisely. Um, but um, I also would say that uh, I would also say that, you know, this is this is a team that still wants to grow kind of organically. So I'm not expecting gigantic moves. However, obviously the Magic are players. And when you look at the free agent market, Philadelphia's got cap room. They're going to be kind of first in line. They got Joel Embiid. Say what you want about that. That's kind of how it is. Orlando suddenly has become a really attractive place. And we've seen this play out with several different players already. That there are a lot of teams that believe the Magic are going to throw their weight around. And obviously, we all know what the big need is. The Magic need shooting. I just spent, you know, a lot, a 10 minutes talking about how the Magic have gotten better at shooting. So, it, it, you know, is it that big of a problem? Yes, it is, because the Magic are still bottom 10 in the league in three-point shooting. I think a lot of teams are going to leave their shooters open. They got to replace a lot of non-shooters with some better shooters, and they got to have some good shooters maintain their shooting, and some struggling shooters get back to where they are, Franz Wagner. Um, but, you know, the Magic needs shooting. And so we've already seen the rumor mill spinning. And a lot of people are putting the Magic's name in their mouth. Thought around the deadline with Clay Thompson, where you know the, the Warriors and Clay Thompson haven't been able to come to an extension agreement. So there's a lot of speculation that the Magic could chase after Clay Thompson and be a team that swoops in and takes him for the twilight of his career. Um, there's been a lot of you know there's been a lot of Magic fans talking up Malik Monk. The Kings are very limited, but in what they can offer him because they only have early bird rights. Um, so. The Magic could easily outbid that number and bring in a, a six man of the year candidate like Malik Monk. And then came the latest one. This is the latest rumor that I saw. It, it made the rounds over the weekend. Uh, Jovan Buha, the, the Lakers beat writer for the uh, for the Athletic, was asked whether he, whether he thinks the Lakers will bring back D'Angelo Russell. And he kind of went down through the through the whole free agent market and said, you know, there there aren't a lot of teams with money. The Sixers are going star hunting. They're not going to go after him. The Spurs aren't a great culture fit for D'Angelo Russell. He doesn't really fit their culture. And then he got to the Magic and he said this, and I want to quote it directly. Orlando's the team. Orlando is the team that talking to people with the Lakers, talking to people outside the Lakers, Orlando is the team that probably gives them the most concern in terms of a potential suitor. They're going to have around $60 million in cap space. They've also been linked to Clay Thompson. You could theoretically get both Clay and D'Lo with that $60 million cap space. Don't get too far, end quote. Don't get too far ahead of yourself there. Uh, I did the math. The Magic are kind of sitting in the, uh, you know, the Magic have $74.1 million in guaranteed money. They're going to they're gonna pick up Jonathan Isaac's final year. That's $17 million. They're going to probably pick up Joe Ingles' team option. Um, I have, you know, I have them functionally at about $38.9 million. So around a little bit less than $40 million in capital, which is still a lot. They still have a lot of money to throw around. Um, and they can use that in trades. It doesn't have to be in free agency. D'Angelo Russell is really interesting. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I don't want to dismiss the idea hot out of hand. Um, but backtracking to the rumor itself, it's really interesting how Jovan... Uh, Jovan, I don't know if it's, I don't know how you pronounce it. Sorry about that. Um, it's really interesting how it's couched. It's couched as the Lakers are concerned that the Magic are the team that could chase them. They don't know. They don't know if they're really interested. Uh, and so that's kind of where everyone sits. Like nobody really knows what the Magic are going to do. And like I said, I don't even think the Magic quite know what they're going to do. They're going to wait for the playoffs. They're going to see what the playoffs look like and what needs to get fixed and how they can make Paolo and Franz's life easier because that's you know that's where they're going to put their money. And so the question then is, you know, who who do they want to spend twenty five million dollars a year on? Like that that like, are they going to give a three year seventy five million dollar contract to D'Angelo Russell? My guess is no. Like I think the price is a little high on D'Angelo Russell, but look. You know, 
Yovan makes a really good case in his mailbag about Russell saying, you know, there's, he's got a bad rap. There's a lot of people outside that, that, that think he is one thing. Those of us who've watched the Lakers know that he is something else. And, and he's had a very good year at the Lakers. He's averaging 18.2 points per game, 6.4 assists per game, shooting 46, 42.1, 81.7 shooting splits. So that's 46% from the floor, 42.1% from three, 81.7% from beyond the arc or from the foul line. Um, I would argue that his stats actually mean a lot more because yes, he can be a point guard and he can run point and he can bring the ball up and handle it. And and again, get those assists, which the magic I think are very lacking right now from their lead guard, but he can also play off the ball because he's playing with LeBron and LeBron has the ball in his hands a lot. And so I think, honestly, when I think about what the magic are looking for, for that second guard, a they got to see if Jalen Suggs can run more point. Um, you know, I think one thing I do, I do think the Magic are missing a point guard someone who can just get the ball to the right person, kind of manage the game and, and calm everyone down. Um, I think Paolo has had to do a lot of ball handling, and that's been good for his development. And and I like that the Magic are doing that. I don't want them to go completely away from that. Same thing with Franz; it's been good for his development. I don't want them to go completely away from that, but. The Magic also need to be able to just get him the ball in a spot, especially late in games. I think too often late in games, Paolo has to initiate. That leads him to getting trapped. They know the ball's going to him. And so he doesn't have the ability to kind of set up his pivot foot and read the defense before he attacks. And that enables, you know, that, you know, he leads the league in turnovers. And I think this is a direct reason for that. And so unless Jalen Suggs is developing into a point guard, and to, to more traditional point guard or have more traditional point guard skills and, and usage, I do think the Magic need to hunt for a point guard. And honestly, when I think about that, I do think of a player like D'Angelo Russell. I'm not going to lie. A player who can work off the ball. And I think this is one of the things that a lot of Magic fans like about Tyus Jones too. And I think Tyus Jones, although you know we haven't had a rumor connecting the Magic to him since the trade deadline, I think Tyus Jones is, is going to be someone to look at as well. Um he has the same concerns for me that D'Angelo Russell does, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but the Magic probably need a guy, a point guard, who can work on the ball, but also spread the floor and work off of it. And so I, I saw this, and I, I, I think that what this means is that a lot of people around the league expect the Magic to A, be active, and B, in the running for sh- the shooting that they desperately need. And they have the money to throw around. And now that they're winning, they are a very attractive team. Like, you know, everyone can kind of see this is the beginning of something for the Magic. There's going to be a lot of guys that want to join that. The question that I have for Russell, same question I have for Tyus Jones, is whether he fits the defensive culture and whether the Magic are willing to sacrifice some of their defensive culture or, or to bring in a player who may not be a perfect culture fit like that on that end in order to boost the shooting and how much the magic are willing to sacrifice on that end, I think comes down to the playoffs. If the magic are competitive, despite their shooting struggles, they may say, okay, we can develop it. We can work around this for now. We don't need to spend $20 million on a shooter. We can find the, the, the kind of right people to bring in that are more role players and stars. If that starting group really struggles, if like Gary Harris struggles, if they, you know, if Jalen Suggs struggles to get his shots off and that shooting is the reason why they lose in the playoff series, then they might say, okay, we need to make a big invest investment. If it costs us a little bit def- defensively, so be it. Our defense will be fine in the long run because we have the personnel to be fine in the long run. Um, but we need, we need offense. And again, I think these are the kind of decisions and the kind of things you think about when we get to the playoffs. Now, you've heard me say this a million times. I've seen in the comments on a couple of videos lately as I've talked more and more about this season, what the Magic can get out of this season. This season is still not about this season. As fun as this game, this this run has been, and, and as much as the Magic should maximize everything they can out of this run, this season is about figuring out what the Magic need for next season. You know, where they should put this money, where they should put that investment. And that's what getting to the playoffs is about. That's why the Magic had to be in the playoffs. And they're going to get there. Like, we're, we're there. Like, you know, again, clinch Magic magic numbers, what, four now, did I, did I say earlier? It's going to happen very, very quickly here. And so this is a it, – it's not surprising to me that the Magic are connected to a player like D'Angelo Russell. 
And I don't think it's the wrong, necessarily the wrong move. I have my questions, but it's got my blessing. I'm not the biggest Andrew Russell fan, but he's had a really good year. Um, I don't think he's a perfect fit for this team, but we'll see. But the manager can be connected to every shooter on the market, and they should be because that's what they need, and they have the power to go out and get them. That's going to do it for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. If you're tuning in, like Google, my Spotify, Odyssey, and all of them, we spend podcasts to your podcast-enabled listening device. For the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can find us there on Twitter at omagicdaily. And be sure to check out my Patreon page, Orlando Magic Hub. You can find that at patreon.com slash Orlando Magic Hub. Now that you're done listening to me, sure, now that you're done listening to me, be sure to check out the Lockdown Sports Day 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and now available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Lockdown Sports Day is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Day now available on the free Fire TV channels app. That's going to do it for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Lock the Magic. We'll be back tomorrow to recap the Magic's game against the Charlotte Hornets here from Charlotte. Until then, for Orlando Magic Daily and Locked on Magic, it's been Philip Rossman, right? We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked on Magic.